guys. Welcome to Better Bachelor. This is Joker with a face for TV and a voice for radio. I got you on that one, didn't I? You know, I've been doing lots of stories and I wanted to do a feel good story. And so I've got actually three about men being awesome. And it shouldn't take too long, but you know, so often we hear that men are this, men are that, negative, 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 and we don't get to see too many awesome stories. And some of these are a little bit older. But they're just ones that I came across and I tucked them aside until I had a few of them to share with you guys. But I'd like more, I'd like to see more stories like this, but it doesn't go with the narrative of kind of what's trying to be pushed today. But I'm going to read through these stories and, and let you learn a little, little bit, a little bit about three awesome guys. Uh, number one, the first one, South Carolina officer comes to aid of needy 13 year old Sumter police officer, uh, Gaetano, uh, Acera went above and beyond the call of duty for Cameron Simmons. Uh, Sunter, South Carolina police officer recently went above and beyond the call of duty for a 13 year old boy. Last month, Cameron called police because he was upset after fighting with his mother and didn't want to leave the house or didn't want to live in the house with his family. Uh, the officer showed up and tried to, uh, talk to him or responded to the call and talked to him. I said, you have it good. You have a roof over your head. Uh, Sarah told the news station. I told him I would try to help him out. And here we are now. The officer uh, brought him home, but soon realized some of the boy's hardships. Simmons didn't even have a real bed or furniture for his bedroom. My heart went out for him. I thought the little things that he needed, I could give him to make him a happier kid. Look, if you can't afford children, don't have children. Don't have children, please. My God. A few weeks after the call, the officer showed up at Simmons' home with a truck full of gifts, including a bed, a TV, desk, chair, and a Wii game system that someone donated after hearing the boy's story. Simmons, who was sleeping on an inflatable mattress, told Asera that because of his new bed, his back won't hurt anymore and is grateful for the gifts. Asera gave the boy his cell phone number and plans to bring him more furniture, including a dresser and a mirror. WIS-TV tracked down the officer and the boy after seeing a photo of the two that, Asera, that Asera's older brother, Ferdinando, posted on Facebook. I didn't do this for the publicity or to get people to notice me, as Sarah said. I did it because I could. It was the right thing to do, and I think people should do things like this. And I agree. There's just not enough stories like this, and I think there's a lot of men that do wonderful things, and they don't get enough coverage. You know, we always get the national coverage of news of bad things, but we never get any national of the good things anymore. I've got another one here, and this is from, uh, I think, just this past, past uh, year. If I grabbed the right story, if I didn't, then I messed up. Uh, Michigan hunters donate record amount of venison to people in need. Hunters have already donated more venison than previous years, and the year isn't even over yet. So a lot of people are, don't like hunters. And I don't understand that because even people that eat meat don't like hunters. They say it's cruel. But I don't know about you, but meat has to come from somewhere. And whether it's from the from a uh, hunting or whether it's from, you know, a slaughterhouse. Either way, your meat's got to come from somewhere, and either way, the animal goes down. Well, when people like to hunt for sport, they use the meat. Most often, every hunter I know has used the meat for their own families. Case in point, I'm, I, I've hunted up in upstate New York, and you could get a 300-pound buck. By the time you strip it and get it down in a fridge, you've got meat for the season. Now, oftentimes, you'll give it to family members as well because there's a lot that you just can't get to, even if you put it in a deep freezer at zero degrees Fahrenheit. Or I guess that would be zero, zero degrees Celsius. Um, anyway, so here's a story uh, regarding the hunters went out and they had extra venison, so they donated it. Every year, Michigan hunters donate thousands of pounds of venison to uh, processors that partner with the Michigan Sportsmen, Sportsmen Against Hunger. The meat is then distributed to families and individuals in need. In 2019, hunters have donated a record amount of venison, surpassing last year's total and reaching highest total on record which was 52,000 pounds of meat for free to the hungry. And the reason why I include this story is because most men tend to be hunters. Um, yes, there are winter, women hunters as well, but statistically it's a very small amount proportionately. So I thought this was a really great story where here guys are enjoying something that they enjoy doing. So I thought I would bring up this story because it's, a, it's an instance where, again, guys are doing something they love, there's a product from that that they can't necessarily do something with. And instead of being wasteful and instead of ruining it, they actually put it towards a good cause. And 52,000 pounds of meat is at least 
you know, half a pound of meat, that's at least 100,000 meals that they just donated. And it's protein. It's good quality source. Last story. Hundreds of men show up to mentor boys at a Texas school. No one expected this. It says, this is so cool. Approximately 600 men showed up for a breakfast with dad event at Texas Middle School where officials put out a call for assistance. The school officials wanted to make sure they had enough male mentors there for the program, and they sure did. Officials at Billy Earl Dade Middle School planned a Breakfast with Dad program for their students in December. 150 boys signed up. Officials were afraid that some of the boys would not have men who would attend with them. They didn't want any boy left out of the program, so they called for help, and help came. The response was overwhelming. Dade Middle School officials had hoped they could get 50 men to show up for the event, but their jaws hit the floor when nearly 600 showed up. These unexpected in, the unexpected influx of interest led the team to move the event from the cafeteria into the gymnasium so they could house more guests. I will never forget witnessing the young students surrounded by supportive community members. There were so many volunteers that at times I saw young men huddled in the center of four and five mentors. The look of awe ever dis, or awe even disbelief in students' eyes as they made their way through the crowd of dads was astonishing. And I, I won't finish reading through this, but these were boys that didn't have didn't have fathers available. And this shows you two things. Number one, men need to be in boys' lives more. And and you know, it's one thing to say if a couple gets divorced and you don't get along well, you still need to make it work for kids. Uh, you know, the children are the ones that suffer. And every kid needs to have a dad in his life. That's a huge deal. Because, you know, when you look at my mother and my father, they're completely opposites, but they work well together. My my mother was the caring one. She would always talk about problems. She would, you know, be kind of the soft shoulder to cry on, so to speak. And my father was the hard knock life lessons where you got a man up and you do the right thing and you take responsibility for your actions and you don't lie and you have a good work ethic. Now, it may be the reverse, but I can't think of too many situations where the father is the shoulder to cry on and the mother is the other one. But either way, two parents give a student or a child, I should say, two different views on, on how to react to life. And I think that's incredibly important. And here's 600 men. Now, whether they had children of their own and had grown up or they were children of uh, they had children of their own they weren't really in contact anymore because of the court laws or they didn't have kids and just missed that opportunity uh, it just shows you that men are genuinely good caring and loving loving when given the opportunity and and I love seeing stories like this and I wish we did see more stories like this and I wish we would change our court systems to incentivize parents staying together and, and working together and women not trying to fight so hard for custody and allowing the joint custody to happen so that the kids don't suffer nearly as much. And the last thing is, I think people should be a little bit more responsible in the fact that if you're going to have kids in a family, make the dedication and understand to stay together. You know, when I was younger, I had several friends that as soon as we got out of high school or in the last few years of high school, the parents got divorced. And many of them said, well, mom and dad wanted to wait until we were grown up and we knew what was going on and we understood and we we're getting ready for college to move out. And so they weren't impacted. And these were, were couples that stayed together. And I don't know the circumstances, of course, because, you know, what teenager is going to talk about that with other teenagers? But in many of the instances, people used to stay together at least so the kids could have a normal upbringing and, and a, a decent household until they get out on their own. Now, whether that can exist anymore or not, I don't know. But it just goes to show that if you if you put together a good family and a good family unit and things don't work out, at least find a way to make it work out for kids. That's the most important part out of all of this. Guys, I'm going to leave it there. If you like my work, please uh, check out down below. I have different ways to support me, both uh, PayPal and Bitcoin. And like, subscribe, and share. Um, I noticed last month from my statistics, I had 4,000 shares. And I, I said some of them came from Facebook, some from Reddit. And it had a whole bunch that said other or unknown. But there were 4,000 links that came into my YouTube channel from outside YouTube. Guys, I cannot thank you enough for sharing my my uh, information or sharing my videos, sharing my webpage, 
and liking and commenting. I always love to hear what you guys have to say, even if we disagree. You know, many times you see me liking posts and somebody the other day said, well, I really like your channel, but I see you liking a bunch of things I don't agree with. And, and I don't, I don't think you should be agreeing with them because a lot of them are very hateful, mean comments. And, and it was from a, it was from a female. And my response to her was, I'm not liking comments because I agree with them. I'm liking comments, letting my viewers know that I've read their comment and that I, I see their opinion and I don't get to all of them because I have enough comments now that I can't get to all of them. But I try to, to, you know, mark the ones that I see with a like. And in some cases I try to comment. And that's one thing that's important to me to try to keep my channel a little bit different than other channels is that I like to stay involved with you guys and in the community. And if I see a, a video where everybody says, man, I don't, I didn't really like this content. Yeah. I don't like hearing that because no one does because their ego bruises it a little bit. But in the same time, I want to hear that so I can improve my channel for you because for me, a different color overlay or a different format or adjusting my microphone, that's easy to do. And if it makes it easier to listen to and easier to enjoy for you guys, then that's what it's all about. It's one of the reasons why I'm trying to adjust my mic and my camera angles and making things look a little different, just so it gives it a better polish for you guys, because I really appreciate all of your views, all of your comments, all of your likes, and all of your shares. So I'm going to leave it there for the night. Thank you guys for everything you do. Stay safe, stay smart. This has been Better Bachelor. I am Joker, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Thank you.